Okay, so at this point there's usually questions because what we're doing in the shop isn't exactly what we do out in the field. In the shop what we're doing is we're taking three single phase transformers and we're creating a three phase bank out of those three single phase transformers. So we're doing an open delta to open delta, delta to delta, delta to y, and then y to delta and y to y, if I haven't mentioned that already. Um, so, but out in the field, we're not taking three separate transformers and creating a three-phase bank. The three-phase transformer has already been created for us. So we can see here that um, this guy has a common core. So we have three separate transformers and they're sharing a common core. That way the magnetic fields can transfer back and forth between the three transformers, right? So we've got one, two, three single phase windings there, right? We have both the primary and the secondary windings within each of these guys, depending on the transformer. Sometimes the higher voltage will be, on, will be facing you. Sometimes the higher voltage will be uh, farther away. Usually the higher voltage is the one that's farthest away from the core. So, what we have to do is we have to hook up H1, H2, and H3. We have to hook up the primary side. And I'll do a diagram below to show how that's done. That's all we need to do. Okay, we bring in our primary conductors, right? Those primary conductors are coming in right here. And our secondary conductors are leaving here. How do I know that these are the secondary conductors on the left-hand side? Well, there's a parallel run off of that side and the larger gauge conductors here. So primary conductors are coming in, being transferred to a, to a, a smaller voltage usually, uh, and then going out. In this case, because the voltage is lower, then the current is going to be higher, and so we need larger gauge conductors for that. So we paralleled uh, the A, B, and the C phase out. Okay, we've also done uh, double neutrals here, so parallel neutrals as well. Okay, on the secondary side, all we have to do is we have to hook up X1, X2, and X3, and the XO, which is hard to see, uh, but it's right here. So this neutral bus right here, that's our neutral bus, that's our XO connections. And you can see that that neutral bus is then bonded to ground. Okay, it's bonded to ground uh, with all of these connections here, right? So we have uh, connections here where we bonded the bushings to ground. You can just make out there's a strap here that bonds the core to ground. This bushing has been bonded to ground. The neutral bus has been bonded to ground. Uh, and then we have our main uh, grounding conductor right here. Okay, so everything's tied together so it's all at the same potential. So we're responsible for the external connections to the transformer but we're not responsible for the connections to create a, a delta or a Y configuration. That's already done within the transformer. Okay, let's take a look at the diagram for a, uh, a delta to Y. So for this guy, we would have a single winding on the primary. And we're responsible for bringing line one into H1 line two into H2, and line three into H3. Okay, they share that common core, and that's also shown usually like this, right? So we just bring in line one to H1, line two to H2, line three to H3. Okay, that's being seen up here. Line one into H1, line two into H2, and line three into H3. Different transformers will have different configurations in that, meaning like the H1 may not necessarily be in the center here. It may be over the left or the right, right? But we're bringing into the, the appropriate terminal for that unit. Okay, so our H1 is right here. And it looks like um, on, the, on the high side, that's where we have the taps. So there's various taps here on the transformer. And those taps, so those taps would be seen uh, on the transformer where you'd have various taps on the transformer that you could hook up, hook up to. And there they allow you to, uh, to deal with like a voltage drop. Maybe there was a voltage drop on your primary conductors and you want to boost that voltage. Or that um, you have two, like the voltage on the output is a little bit too high. 
So you want to step that down a touch. So you have the ability to do, you know, small percentages, small percentage changes on the voltage input here, which will affect the voltage output of the transformer. Okay, so by changing that tap, then you change which, uh, like, which tap this bus goes to for H1, H2, and H3. Okay, so that's our primary conductors there. And for us, our standard voltage is usually uh, 600 volts. So we usually use 600 volts as our line voltage that goes throughout the building and then feeds this transformer. So based on the previous diagrams, that means that the phase voltage is 600 volts on the inside of this transformer as well. Okay, but again, we're not responsible for creating this, de this delta that's already done for us. We're just responsible for bringing the appropriate size of conductor in and tying it into H1, H2, and H3. Okay, on the secondary side, uh, I've been showing on the previous videos that we, ha that we had two windings on the secondary. And normally we just have one winding. So we just have uh, the single winding for each of the phases that are all tied to a common star point or a common center point. Okay, with these guys, we're going to have X1, X2, and X3. Okay, so I've tried to show that like this one on top is H1, so that one on top is X1. H2 is on the left, corresponding to X2 on the left. H3 is on the right, corresponding to X3 here. Okay, these guys would be brought out and they would feed line one, line two, and line three on the secondary. Okay, and our secondary, standard secondary voltage for most distribution is 208 volts. That's our line value. And again, that 208 is going to be between any of the lines here. Okay, and then we also have uh, this center spot right here, and that's brought out as the neutral. Okay, and as we've seen, that neutral is bonded to ground. That voltage is root three less. So the voltage between any line and the neutral, which is the phase voltage, meaning that each of these guys is creating 120 volts on the phase. And so our input here is 600 volts, three phase in, right? And that's a three wire system. And then our output here is 120 volts on the phase, 28 volts on the line, right? And this is a four wire system, okay? This is our single phase value, and this is our three phase value. So it allows us to get two separate voltages out of the single voltage that came in, okay? And again, because the voltage uh, is low, lower than the primary voltage, then the current is obviously gonna be larger because with these guys, power in is equal to power out, or VA in is equal to VA out. If you have a 45 kVA transformer, it's 45 kVA in and 45 kVA out. So if the power remains the same and the voltage drops, that means the current capability on the secondary is going to increase. Okay, wiring on the, on the common core uh, would look like this. So we would have, um, our labels here with, we'd have H1, H2, like if we were gonna create this ourselves, I'm just showing you like inside the transformer what um, is going on. So we have single windings there. Okay, and in actual fact, um, this label right here, like those would be our standard uh, conductors that we'd seen before, right? Um, but the labels that we're gonna see on the outside uh, are most likely gonna be uh, H1, H2, and H3. That's all we're responsible for. Okay, so we've got three phase coming in, right? This is usually 600 volts. Line one to H1, line two to H2, 
and line 3 to H3. Okay, what's happening on the inside of the, the transformer is they, they have created the, the tie-in between each of the single phase windings on that common core there, right? So we said this was A, B, and C. So this connection here internally is made to here. So A to B, then we have B to C. So this one that I'm drawing right here is internally done. And then we have uh, C back to A, and I've screwed up. And should be on the C phase. Sorry about that. So C, and then this one's internally done back to A. Okay, so what, what we're responsible for is this connection externally. Okay, then we've got our conductors here, uh, and this is usually X1, X2, and X3. Those are the internal con the, the external connections that we'd see. And then if we had an XO connection, that would be our neutral connection. Internal connections on this guy uh, would be that this guy is going to feed. So we got line one, line two, line three, and our neutral. So this guy would feed line one. This guy, X2, would feed line two. X3 would feed line three. And all the X2s would be, one would be brought out to the neutral bus, but internally they would be jumpered together. So this common connection would already be done by the manufacturer. Okay, so that brings us to our connections on the outside, which would be X1, X2, and X3. Okay, and the neutral is corresponding to the XO connection. And then we make sure that this guy is bonded to ground. So hopefully that clears things up in that what we're doing in the shop projects is simply taking three single phase transformers and creating a three phase bank. But out in the field, we're not responsible for creating that three phase bank. The three phase transformer has already come to us from the manufacturer. And we're just responsible for H1, H2, and H3, X1, X2, X3, and XO for the neutral, and making sure that we have the appropriate size of conductors for the primary and the secondary, and that we've bonded everything together to provide that neutral with a common connection for all the steel surrounding and any steel or um, bushing connections that we've made including the common core here, that gets bonded to, to ground. And then the neutral, through that bonding connection, goes to our main grounding conductor, and then that grounds the entire system there. All right, guys, hopefully that clears things up. Um, I'll see you in the next video. We're going to move on to uh, the next configuration with that we're doing in shop.